사랑하는 성도님들 새첫 금요철 예배입니다 찬송과 219장을 부르시면서 예배를 준비하시겠습니다 찬송과 502장을 부르시겠습니다. 밤에 다리 지나고 
만민 찬양 92장 목자의 성을 부르시겠습니다 Starting with a silent prayer, let us offer a Friday all night service to Father God. And who will be the stability of your times, a wealth of salvation, wisdom, and knowledge? The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Amen. Let's sing hymn number 168. When, it, when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal, green and fair, when the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. On that bright and cloudless morning, when the dead in Christ shall rise, and the glory of His resurrection share, and His chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the skies, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Let us labor for the master from the dawn setting sun. Let us talk about all his wondrous love and care. 
And when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the role is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the role is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Let's pray for a couple of topics. Let's pray for our senior pastor. Lord,我们感谢你，我们感谢你，我们感谢你，我们感谢你，我们感谢你，我们感谢你，我们感谢你，我们感谢你，我们感谢你，我们感谢你，我们感谢你，我们感谢你，我们感谢你，我们感谢
remembering your words. Father God, thank you for um, setting up the acting senior pastor for us through the holy uh, Daniel, uh, the divine healing meeting. Please let, uh, let us all glorify you. Please remember all the uh, members who are um, promoting the uh, divine healing meeting. Father, please uh, be with them and give blessings to them. And we will listen to the senior pastor's message tonight. Please let us um, receive a strength and grace through the message. Please bless Pastor Tehijo, who is presiding at the service. And uh, please be glorified through the anthem of Imano Kainese Orchestra. And please remember all the helping hands for this service and give the rivers in heaven and the blessings on this earth to them. Father God, please remember all the members who are attending the service and give them abundant grace and blessing. And Father God, let us all give this worship in spirit and truth. Please be glorified alone through this service. Thank you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Scripture reading is Revelation chapter 17, verses 8 through 14. The beast that you saw was and is not and is about to come up out of the abyss and go to destruction. And those who dwell on the earth, whose name has not been written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, will wonder when they see the beast that he was and is not and will come. Here is the mind which is wisdom. The with seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits, and there are seven kings, five have fallen, one is, the other has not yet come, and when he comes, he must remain a little while. The beast which was and is not is himself who was in an eighth and is one of the seven, and he goes to destruction. The ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have not yet received the kingdom, but they receive authority as kings with the beast for one hour. These have the one purpose, and they give their power and authority to the beast. These will wage war against the Lamb, and the Lamb will overcome them, because He is the Lord of lords and King of kings, and those who are with Him are the called and chosen and faithful. Amen. Emmanuel Kair, and this orchestra will glorify God with their praise.
Mammy Magazine delivering church news will be played. This Mammy Magazine is about the testimonies of Deacon Myung-ho Lee and Deaconess kyung Su Young, who have been healed of diseases through the prayer for the sick. The day to celebrate the birth of Jesus, who came to this earth 2,000 years ago to save all mankind. On December 23rd, we offered the Christmas Eve service. Jesus' birth and crucifixion were the best embodiments of his sacrificial love in order to gain the true children of God who have cast off sins and restore the God's image. May the joy of Christmas overflow in your heart, not only today, but also every day. In the name of our Savior Jesus Christ, I pray. In the second part, the Christmas Eve performance, Happy Christmas, was held. This event was a meaningful performance that the members from Sunday School, Men's and Women's Missions, Young Adults, and Kingdom Missions participated themselves. To celebrate the birth of our Lord, What I felt in the Christmas Eve event is still vivid now. That performance touched my heart a lot. It gave me a lot of grace. In particular, I felt elders praised so well. As I saw familiar faces like Elder Yong Seok Lee and Elder Moon Bok Ma, I was surprised. I received a lot of grace from their very good praise. Watching it itself made me so full of the Spirit. I was happy. I was blessed by the women's mission members. I know each of them didn't have much time to prepare, but they practiced hard and showed it to us. I was impressed a lot. It was a warm, joyful, and happy Christmas more than any time before. The praises that the performers gave to Father God were so touching. I think Father God and our Lord were happy to see them too. It was a very touching praise. I'm grateful that even the children of the Whitestone Choir participated happily.
The day the Lord came to this earth for us, remembering and giving thanks for this day, we offered up the Christmas celebration service. Loving members, Merry Christmas. I hope you have a merry and happy Christmas. Dr. Sujin Lee, acting senior pastor, delivered the message entitled The Three Gifts and urged us to give true gifts to the Lord. During the evening service, there was the Certificate of Merit Award Ceremony. It was a worthy to Mrs. Bong Nim Lee, director of Mamin Prayer Center, who devoted herself wholeheartedly to Daniel Prayer Meeting and the Holy Spirit Prayer Meeting in 2022 to help the members could grow in faith. Instead of the year in step meeting, on December 30th, pastors and Levi workers had the Holy Spirit Prayer Meeting with Mrs. Bong Nim Lee. Through the words and prayer leading of uh, Mrs. Lee, pastors and church staff had time to look back on the year, recall the love of tears of the shepherd, and decide to become the fruit of change. It was a time to end the year meaningfully. On January 2, 2023, the new year, the year beginning staff meeting was held with pastors and church staff. With the scripture of Philippians 3, 14 and 15, acting senior pastor Dr. Sujin Lee uh, urged the staff to remember the first passion when they became church staff and to become more faithful in 2023. Two thousand twenty three New Year service where we ended the new the year two thousand twenty two and started the new year. Hallelujah. Happy New Year. Dr. Sujin Lee, acting senior pastor, delivered the message entitled Be Strong and Courageous, the Church's New Year Prayer Title Number One. And at the second part, the time of prayer for blessings. The church members wrote down their personal prayer titles for the new year carefully and submitted them to the church. And the members from overseas churches wrote down their prayer titles with the hope that their desires in heart would be truly fulfilled. For the prayer title cards offered up to the altar, acting senior pastor Dr. Sujin Lee prayed earnestly with the hope that all the prayers would be answered. At the following performance time, the Springfield performances were offered with the subject of church prayer titles, Be Strong and Courageous, Take Heaven by Force, Heart Sanctuary, and the Power of Recreation 100%. The year 2023 has newly begun. We earnestly hope that we may be blessed to fulfill God's providence towards Mamin beautifully according to His will. The Bible reading campaign as the 2023 Spiritual Growth Project is in progress. GCM broadcast the program called Bible Reading to help this product, project. Also, GCM provides an online Bible reading service through its website to help you read the Bible anywhere, anytime.
We look forward to your active participation for your growth in faith in 2023. The Divine Healing Meeting in January will be held on the 13th at the Friday night service led by Acting Senior Pastor. Hope you prepare yourself well with prayer to receive blessings and answers. The new year has begun. We are now going to meet the first testimony givers in 2023. I'm Myung Ho Lee from the Second Chinese Parish. I have had bad joints since childhood. My legs always felt cold. When it was minus 30 degrees Celsius, I rode a bike for twice for a distance of about 30 kilometers. It was so cold that my nose felt freezing. Ice froze outside the mask that I was wearing. It was so cold. When I tried to get off, my legs were frozen that I couldn't get off the bike. I was in my 40s back then, and after my legs froze like that, twice riding a bike, the symptoms of cold legs got worse. Even before I came to Korea, because my legs felt cold when it was raining in winter or cloudy in summer, it was very uncomfortable. If there is a fan, I had to avoid it because my legs were cold. Symptoms were severe, so I drank a little, then I could sleep without knowing the cold. Deacon Myung Ho Lee always had an electric blanket on because the symptoms of cold legs continues even in hot summer. And one day in 2016, he came across mommy newspaper. My wife liked the mommy newspaper, so I read it once. I also liked it when I read about the power of the pastor in many testimonies. I liked the two letters, Man Min. I thought that Man Min Church was truly leading all people to salvation. Later, I saw someone was delivering Man Min newspaper to my house. So I followed her and asked if God's power was manifested in the church. She said, yes and I come to attend Mom in church. My whole family went to church, and at the moment I stepped in the church, I felt so happy. I liked the messages a lot, and I was very impressed by the members who were worshiping in spirit and in truth. The deed of evangelism delivering Ma Min News became fruit and became a blessing to Deacon Myung Ho Lee's family. After joining the church in 2016, I was healed of cartilage tear. Also, before attending church, I had a corn on the heel of my foot, and it became bigger and hurt. So I had surgery once in China and once in Korea. Even after two surgeries, the corn spread and it became 12 corns. I had corns all over my heel. It hurt so much, so I worked with limping. However, after I spread the moan sweet water and received prayer, the corns disappeared completely and my foot became clean and pretty. No thick flesh at all. It became uh, pretty. 
Because he personally experienced the power of the shepherd, he had heard through testimonies, he was given the faith that he could be healed of the symptoms of cold legs that he had suffered for, from for 30 years. So he prepared with prayer and words. Our pastor always taught us the spiritual words well, so I looked back on the things I didn't practice even though I heard and knew. I also prayed to the Holy Spirit, please help me to remember what I couldn't repent. And when I remembered, I repented. I read the senior pastor's books quickly and kept reading other books. Also, I attended the annual prayer meeting, prayed earnestly, and received the closing prayer. Well, there was the Divine Healing Meeting on November 25th, and on 24th, the Chinese parish held the Holy Spirit prayer meeting with Mrs. Bong Nam Lee. I went to church and prayed, and then I got encouraged a lot. I was so grateful to Mrs. Bong Nam Lee, who led the prayer meeting so fully. I was blessed by her, and I prayed so fervently, even sweating. The next day, when I received the Acting Senior Pastor's Prayer for the Sick at the Divine Healing Meeting, I felt hot and I sweated a lot. I sweated so much that I took off the clothes I was wearing underneath. And I said, I got really healed today. I have had no cold leg symptom until now. So I put away the electric uh, blanket. I'm healed and I'm healthy so far. Cold legs, back disc, and back pain, all are gone. And I'm so healthy. Before, I had a lot of worries. But after joining Mom in Church, all my worries disappeared, even though I just offered the full tithe and just uh, kept the Lord's Day holy. No worries. Why? Father God is with us and helping us. So why do we have to have worries? So uh, with a heart of thanks always, I want to change more completely and fulfill the duty given by Father God more fully so that I can become the strength for the senior pastor. All glory be to Father God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hello, I'm Deaconess Kyung Soo Yang from the Ninth Parish. I'm running a restaurant. I was preparing the ingredients in the morning, and when I took out something from the refrigerator, I couldn't get my foot out, and the door hit my foot. When the door hit it, it hurt so much. Only this, only this part of my toenail remained, and the rest was lifted. If I lift it up like this, the whole toenail would shake enough to fall out. I thought the toenail is about to fall out, and I sent a text message to my sister who's working in Mommy Prayer Center. I asked her, I got my foot hit by the door of the refrigerator, and my toenail is about to fall out. Should I pull it out? Then she said, no, you should not. She also said, you said you would pray. Why don't you pray for it? At that moment, I remembered when senior pastor's fingernail got injured. Senior pastor said that even when it was fractured, father got healed it without pain. I remember that. As I was closing sliding doors in a hurry, my finger was caught in the gap between them and bones were shattered. Had I used my fleshly thought, I couldn't have just left my finger just like that. But I didn't have any worries. I completely believed that God would heal me. I'd rather have peace of mind. So I, pr I proclaimed to you, saying, Watch me how God will be working on me. I never put on a cast. 
nor did I get an injection or medicine. Did the cure take place very slowly, or was there any problem? Not at all. God the Father healed it so perfectly. Thinking of the senior pastor's testimony, she began to pray to entrust it to Father God and to be, to be healed by faith. And I wondered what hindered me from being protected. I quickly remembered my deficiency of the body. I had to be more careful by doing it slowly, but I did it quickly out of a sense of urgency. So I thought that I had to throw away the deficiencies of the body, and I remembered the many aspects that I was not perfect before Father God. I attended the Bible Daniel prayer meeting with all my heart, and I prayed earnestly between times. I received the senior pastor's prayer for the sick and prayed in the sweet water often. And then, after one week, there was no, uh, there was a redness. But since I kept doing that, it got better day by day. The slight swelling went down, and the redness also went down. I touched it lightly like this to check if it was touched. Then it wasn't lifted. The toenail got attached well without knowing when. It was so amazing. It was healed so quickly. I thought it was amazing. When it was three weeks, it was it was all healed. So I was able to walk and wear sneakers. So I wore them freely. Um, being protected in the space of the shepherd, becoming the shepherd's flock, and gaining a new life after joining Mommy Church, I am so grateful for all of this. So I think that I have to try harder to become perfect and pray with all my heart, will and sincerity to Father God, and I have to throw away excuses saying I cannot do it because of this and that. Dear members, let us have more revival in the space of the shepherd and go together to New Jerusalem with fervent prayers. Love you. Thank you. Father God of love is guiding us so that we can walk the way of true children. He helps us to live a life protected in the space of the shepherd. And above all, He pours down grace so that our hope for New Jerusalem becomes more earnest. Therefore, giving thanks for the love of Father God that we feel that we feel in our lives every day, we start the new year 2023 happily. Happy New Year! Happy New Year! In 2023, I'll become a stronger and more courageous worker who can strive for a revival with all my heart, will, and sincerity. I'm serving in the military now. In 2022, I was able to start my military life prosperously in the grace of Father God. I hope that for the remaining 10 months, I will continue to pray and keep my faith in the grace of Father God. In 2023, I believe that we will obey more the words of sing, acting senior pastor so that we can make a greater revival of Mom Min with her uh, beautifully. I was given a duty of a district leader in 2023. I'll run more fervently and diligently preach, to preach uh, to bear much fruit. Can't wait. Fighting. My shepherd, Dr. Gerald Lee, acting senior pastor, Dr. Sujin Lee, Mrs. Bong Lim Lee, and all MAMI members, I wish you a happy and prosperous new year. 
The year 2023 will be an amazing year to Manmin Church. Manmin fighting. In 2023, I pray that God will give you a double blessing on your ministry and that you will change the world with that blessing. Happy New Year, full of God's blessing. Loving regards from Israel. We'll always pray for Mammin and work hard in Israel with Mammin. Happy New Year. God bless you. Celebrating the year 2023, I wish Dr. Gerald Lee and Mamin family many blessings in their spiritual lives. And we always remember and love Mamin. I pray that you will be filled with blessings in the amazing ministry of power that God has given you to save many souls in the world. We have to act with faith in 2023, too, because our vision is to achieve, succeed, win, and add blessing upon blessing, both in spirit and body. Also, the Word of God we have learned in Mamin is to walk in faith uh, to please God. Be happy in the new year. Love you. May God bless all the days of Dr. Gerald Lee and God's grace be with you. Happy new year. I will continue to preach the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, and will follow the Lord with Mammin. Love you all, Mammin. Loving members, the year 2023, we look forward to the year 2023. Vigorously, let's go. Go forward. Fighting. Fighting. Go for it. Go for it. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Love you. With the Lord's blessing, happy 2023. Have the happy 2023. Mommy fighting. Mommy fighting. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Mamin. We will watch the senior pastor's video sermon entitled Lectures on Revelation, Session 61. Loving brothers and sisters in Christ, members of branch churches and local sanctuaries, all of the members who are attending this service through the Internet, and GCN viewers. Revelation chapter 17 expands on the beast that had ruled over the earth during the seven-year Great Tribulation and the woman with the actual control over the beast. The beast refers directly to the United, unified government and the woman to Lucifer. But in a large, larger sense, the beast does not refer to the unified government alone. The computer system used by the unified government as its instrument can also be referred to as the beast. By the same token, the woman does not refer only to Lucifer, but also to the heads of the forces of the Antichrist under Lucifer's control. The Apostle John is now learning the identity of this beast and the woman. 
Nothing could stop his astonishment. John realized once again that God had allowed and given the evil spirits the authority to accomplish the plan of human cultivation and that everything had been accomplished precisely according to God's providence. People who do not know God's providence and justice are quick to say, as they see the world around them, where is justice? Isn't it the wicked who actually thrive? But Psalms 37, 1 and 2 remind us, Do not fret because of evildoers. Be not envious toward the wrongdoers. For they will wither quickly like the grass and fade like the green herb. Evil doers and wrongdoers seem to prosper, but their end is anything but prosperity. Their prosperity lasts only for a while. They may appear to prosper well in this world, but they will ultimately be subject to punishment in the everlasting realm for what they have done. It is the same with the forces of darkness uh, uh, spearheaded by Lucifer. They have been given the authority to rule all the darkness during the history of the human cultivation. So during that period, they do their work as if they hold absolute control, but their authority is limited to darkness, and it can be wielded only through people walking in darkness. And their authority is valid only during the time which God has permitted. When the time is up, they will also pay the price of what they have done. Their once seemingly total and infinite control over the world fades away, and they will face judgment of God's strict justice. The Apostle John is witnessing these events taking place. When he saw God's providence being accomplished precisely according to God's justice, John couldn't contain his astonishment. Of course, the Apostle John knew very well that God was omniscient and God was in charge of everything. Still, he was reminded yet again of God's such attributes as he was witnessing the events unfolding during the seven-year Great Tribulation. And he was amazed by God's mysterious providence and plan manifested and executed for the purpose of the human cultivation. That's why John wrote in Revelation 17, 6, that he wandered greatly. God continues explaining through the angel the things that will still come to pass. Revelation 17, 8 says, The beast that you saw was and is not and is about to come come up out of the abyss, abyss, and go to destruction, and those who dwell on the earth whose name has not been written in the book of life from the foundation of the world will wander when they see the beast that he was and is not and will come. I explained this very briefly in the last session. When the time allowed for the evil spirit comes to an end, the seven-year Great Tribulation will also come to an end on the earth. The unified government will come once more and lead them to eternal destruction. When things do not go their way, evildoers do their utmost to, utmost to bring other people down with them. That's what the enemy devil and Satan do. These acts of the enemy devil and Satan will go on until the end. They tempted Adam and Eve, caused them to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and have led a myriad of, a myriad of people to destruction since then. 
During the Seven Year Great Tribulation and the last moments of the Millennium Kingdom, just before the Great White Throne Judgment, the enemy devil and Satan tempt people. Those whose names have not been written in the Book of Life from the foundation of the world will wonder when they see the beast. Means countless unsaved people who have not received the salvation will fall to the temptation of the enemy devil and Satan. Since the foundation of the world, the enemy devil and Satan have tempted people in various ways. If you love the world and do not cut ties with it, you will be tempted in an instant. You will then lose grace and your faith will grow weak. You will lose faith. You have to discern well what faith is. Faith rooted in the flesh can change at any time because that faith is not yet perfect and whole. Only after you have cut off everything that is worldly, abstained from every form of evil, and entered spirit, could you be said to be have received salvation. If not, even if you have been elected mission or small group or district leader through your faithfulness and service at the church, you don't know when you will be tempted. Suppose you have been tempted and been committing sins. There's a line God has drawn, and once you cross that line because of your sinning, you must know there is no salvation for you. You will never be given the spirit of repentance. When you go home today, read Hebrews chapter 6 and 10 again. It's the same as crucifying to yourself the Lord and putting Him to open shame again. It's different from someone with no faith. If you profess to have faith but crucify to yourself our Lord again, keep committing sins even as you know that that is the path to destruction and end up crossing the line that God has drawn, God will have no choice but to turn His face away from you and there is no way to prevent the even the enemy devil and uh, Satan from making accusations against you. That is justice. Because of that, there are so many people going down the path to death today. The unified government during the seven-year Great Tribulation alone is not the only beast that has appeared in the world. The enemy The devil and Satan have appeared as various beasts at different points in history, and the beasts do not literally signify any animal-like beings. The beasts refer to all forces that play the role of servants of the enemy devil and Satan, hostile to God. The beast, the servants of the enemy devil and Satan, have opposed God, challenged God's uh, kingdom, and persecuted and killed His people. They have done such evil things. Still, people will fall into the temptation of the beast when they see the beast. Because the beasts are always plausible, plausible in their outward appearance. People will fall into temptation on its account. They will actually be greatly surprised, saying, Amazing, wonderful, and fall into their schemes and go to destruction. That's why 2 Corinthians 11, 14, and 15 warn us, No wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Therefore, it is not surprising if His servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness, whose end will be according to their deeds. So we must discern everything by the truth and examine it by its fruit. In Matthew 7, 19 through 20, Jesus tells us a good tree cannot produce bad fruit. Have you ever seen a good tree yielding bad fruit? Does an apple tree bear bad fruit? A grapevine bears grapes? It does not bear bad fruit. Fruit trees bear mouth-watering fruit, whether it's a, a pear, a persimmon, or a sweet persimmon tree. Each tree bears its corresponding fruit. Bitter persimmon trees yield bitter persimmons, and they can be um, decocted, uh, uh, and once they are ripe, you have soft, delicious persimmons. No good trees can ever bear bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, nor can a bad tree produce good fruit. Common sense tells us that no bad tree produces beautiful fruit. We all know this. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire.
That's why people who have done the works of the flesh will end up being forsaken. Why? Because they are very bad trees. When likened them to trees, they are the worst. So then you will know them by their fruits. Revelation 17, 9 to 10 emphasize that we must discern everything by the truth and not fall into temptation. The two verses explain to us once again the identity of the beast that will rise in the future. Revelation 9, 17, 9 and 10 here is the mind which was, has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits, and there are seven kings. The five have fallen, one is, the other has. has not yet come, and when he comes, he must remain a little while. I said earlier, the beasts have appeared in different forms at different points in history. There were times when the beasts appeared in the form of nations or empires and opposed God and persecuted the people of Israel. Namely, they are the empires of Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Mede and Persia, and Macedonia, and Rome. Let's count again. Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Mede and Persia, Macedonia, and Rome. How many are there? We've counted six. The unified government that will rise during the Great Tribulation brings the total to seven. The background and structure of each are different, but Lucifer has been, is, and will be behind it. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits, refer to the prominent forces under Lucifer's control. At the time of the Apostle John, some forces had already risen and fallen. Others were present at the time, and still others rise in the future. The force that will rise in the future is the unified government, which rules over the world for a little while. As written here, they rule the world only for a little while. It will rule over the world for a short time, lasting only seven years. Here is the mind which has wisdom means that you must understand such providence of God and must not be tempted. Without wisdom, you will fall into the beast's temptation and go the way of destruction. At different points throughout history, God used His people in revealing His will and wisdom time and again. Proverbs 19 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Fearing the Lord. Isn't it easy? Don't you find fearing of the Lord easy? Fearing of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We fear God by abstaining from every form of evil and hating even an image or trace of evil. Once you rid yourself of evil from the heart, you'll be able to rid the evil in your mind as well. Once you've thrown away all evil, you'll exclude and show only goodness. We've learned about wisdom. If you fear God, you abstain from every form of evil. That's why the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. God is goodness itself. Once you have abstained from every form of evil and rid yourself of all untruths, your heart will be transformed by goodness, and you'll be able to take hold of the heart of our Lord. Everything you see and hear will be of goodness. You'll not harbor evil thoughts or commit any evil deeds. The end of evil is destruction. Evil is the product of, it, of the enemy devil. Goodness cannot be overcome by the enemy devil. The enemy devil may have a hand in it for a while, but in the end it will lose. Good always prevails. 
For that reason, Scripture says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Our clear knowledge of God and the Lord is the source of understanding. God always says the fear of the Lord God is beginning. of wisdom, but many have failed to gain wisdom because they have not feared God. They fell into temptation of the beast, opposed God, lived in sin and evil, and ultimately had no other choice but go down the path of destruction. This will continue until the last moment of seven-year great tribulation. God is recorded in the Bible in great detail everything that will transpire leading up to the last moment of the seven-year great tribulation. In Revelation 17.9 and the following verses is the detailed account of the events to take place in the last moments of the tribulation. From a historical standpoint, the verses elaborate on the forces of the beast that have been at different stages in history. They also speak of the end of the unified government and the forces of the Antichrist, both of which will exist during the seven-year Great Tribulation. The phrase, five have fallen, one is, the other has not yet come, explains how the unified government will crumble. Five have fallen. Shall we count? 2,000 years ago, when John was writing down what what he saw, he wrote that five have fallen. By then, the empires of Egypt, Assyria, Media and Persia, and Macedonia had already risen and fallen. One is, what does that mean? But empire was still around. At the time John was writing, the Roman Empire was still in existence. That's why John wrote, five have fallen. One is, the other has not yet come. The last, the other, is the one still to come during the seven-year Great Tribulation. As the seven-year Great Tribulation nears its end, most of the forces of the unified government will have been destroyed. But some forces will have survived and still remain. Those people will survive on the earth even during the Millennium Kingdom. During that time, evil spirits, including Lucifer, will not be able to do their work because they are confined in their base. That's why the wicked people who had constituted the unified government will no longer demonstrate their evil. Yet, their evil will their evil will remain dormant within them. It's merely that their evil attributes are not displayed on the outside. The evil spirits, including Lucifer, are released once again in the closing moments of the Millennium Kingdom and cause those people to take the lead in standing against God. Even as the seven-year Great Tribulation ends, the unified government collapses and the Millennium Kingdom begins, the forces of the Antichrist will be kept alive. After we have received the salvation and partaken in the seven-year wedding banquet while the world suffers from the seven years of Great Tribulation, we return to the earth and reign like kings and queens during the Millennium Kingdom. And people in flesh want to get married married and be given away in marriage and keep giving birth in in an age in which there will be no death as the pro-life rate and the earth will be filled with people once again. While God's children who have received salvation will have been transformed into spiritual bodies, fleshy people will have not. They will yet they will not yet have been transformed. So we will be preaching the gospel to them diligently. We'll teach them that Jesus is the Messiah and there are heaven and hell, the truth, and that when the time comes, the enemy devil will be released and tempt the people in an effort to bring them to hell. But the Bible says many people will be tempted nonetheless. In other words, they will return to the path of death. Because no force of darkness can carry out its work during the Millennium Kingdom, evil attributes will be suppressed. But when God allows, a time will come when the evil within them will be 
instigated. The most prominent of those forces of the Antichrist during the Millennium Kingdom is a religious faction. Revelation 17.11 says, The beast which was and is not is himself also an eighth and is the one of the seven, and he goes to destruction. The beast which was and is not is himself also an eighth refers to the religious faction that served as the psychological foundation for the forces of the Antichrist. Of course, this religion, religious faction had allied with the unified government and constituted the foundation of the Antichrist. The beast is one of the seven, signifies the beast is essentially one with the unified government ruling over the world during the seven-year Great Tribulation. The reason this religious faction is also an eighth is because it will have played a significant part in the forces of the Antichrist. Brothers and sisters, the Bible speaks many times of the identity of the Antichrist. On the uh, identity of the Antichrist, the 1st John 2.22 says, Who is the liar but the one who denies that Jesus is the Christ? This is the Antichrist, the one who denies the Father and the Son. The Antichrist is the enemy of Jesus Christ. The Antichrist opposes our Lord Jesus Christ. Since it will deny Jesus Christ being the Messiah, it stands against Jesus Christ. And the heretics are the Antichrist and its forces. The first John 4, 3 also says, And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. Any spirit that acknowledges Jesus, that does not confess Jesus is our Savior, that denies that Jesus is the Messiah, is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist. Again, the spirit of the Antichrist, we read. Do Jehovah's Witnesses confess Jesus as the Messiah? No, they don't. Of which you have heard that it is coming, and now it is already in the world. The second John 1 7 says, For many deceivers have gone out into the world, those who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. This is the deceiver and the Antichrist. In short, people who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh are heretics. They deny the message of salvation, the message of the cross. Jesus was born in this world in the same way each of us has been born. The physical features included the two eyes, the one nose, two ears, a mouth, every born and flesh identical to each of us. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and was born. And you all know the reason why. From the message of the cross, you have learned why He had to have been born that way. In order to become our Messiah and redeem us from our sins, He could not have been born a descendant of Adam, but was instead conceived conceived by the Holy Spirit. At the same time, becoming the Messiah required that Jesus be born a man. He was born a man, no different in physical attributes from you or me. Why? Since Adam the man had seen that the one who was to redeem us from our sins also needed to be a man. For that reason, God's only begotten Son was born in this world in the flesh. The sins of man could only be atoned by a man. It could not be done by an animal or beast. The enemy devil redeem us from our sins. The good angels redeem us from our sins. Since Adam, the man committed the sin and went down the path of death, all his descendants were placed on the same path as well. For that very reason, the one who was to redeem us also needs to be a man. That's why the Son of God had to be born in this world in flesh. But since all descendants of Adam have been uh, our sinners and not one of them could become our Savior. For that reason, Jesus was born after having been conceived by the Holy Spirit. 
Again, for many deceivers that have gone out into the world, those who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh, this is the deceiver and antichrist. Such people are heretics. If you ask people busy accusing a church or a pastor for the definition of heresy, despite what the Bible clearly says, they cannot give an answer. They keep accusing heresy, heresy, but when asked for the definition, they are mum. They ought to explain it just as we've re- read. The definition of heresy is this, denying that Jesus came into this world in flesh, denying God and His Son, and denying that Jesus is the Messiah. This is the definition of heresy. As recorded above, the Antichrist refers to those who deny the Father God and the Son Jesus Christ, and those who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. The Antichrist is anyone or a force that stands opposed to the Christ, our Messiah, or in other words, the enemy devil or a people who belong to the enemy devil. The forces of the Antichrist that play this role during the seven-year Great Tribulation are the religious faction within the unified government. Indications have been there from a long time ago. Even though the Book of Acts tells us that there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved, other religions have claimed to have salvation as well. The Bible could not be clearer that there is no other name than the name of Jesus Christ by which we are saved. Still, the unified government will call for and try to bring together all religions in the name and for the sake of peace. God is strictly forbidden this in the Ten Commandments and the Old Testament as well. Mommy Church must never be tempted. No matter what kind of persecution we may face, we must stand on the rock and never be tempted. The unified government controls and rules over the entire world and persecutes and kills Christians. Wasn't that the same during the times of Jesus? So who persecuted Jesus? It was the very people who claimed to know the Lord God, the self-proclaimed people of God's elect, the high priests, the priests, the scribes, and the Pharisees who claimed to know the law of Moses better than anyone who ended up arresting and crucifying Jesus. They persecuted him, claiming that Beelzebub, the rule of the demons, had instigated him, that he had gone mad, or that he was the deceiver. It's the same today. As they witness the works of God, the signs and wonders manifested, they ought to learn to acknowledge, kneel, and humble themselves. But people are all the more eager to persecute and have men of God killed. How foolish is their effort? Is that effort successful? It is the unified government that seemingly opposes God and persecutes Christians. But it is the religious faction within the unified government that creates the environment and provides the motives. This religious faction also appears to seek God and the Lord, but they will corrupt the truth in a very crafty manner and bring the bite to persecute those who believe in God and the Lord. For example, they will corrupt the truth by saying, the truth is anywhere. It is the will of the Lord to cooperate with those who follow other religions and embrace them. All religions must come together for the pursuit of peace. At the same time, they will condemn as being impure people who only follow the Lord and refuse to compromise with anything in the world. They will persecute true Christians and tempt the world. They will drive many Christians to deny the Lord, bow before idols, and compromise with the world. This is the hidden identity and agenda agenda of the Antichrist. The religious faction and its head are the main driving force behind this task.
The spiritual head of the beast is a religious faction, and it will become the head of all other factions within the unified government. But this eighth king will ultimately face destruction as well. Revelation 17, 20, 12, and 13, the ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have not yet received the kingdom, but they receive authority as kings with the beast for one hour. These have one purpose, and they give their power and authority to the beast. The unified government will be composed of many nations. Each nation in and of itself has no power to rule over the whole world. But as many nations come together for one purpose, they have the power to act and rule as one. Each nation actively supports the forces of the Antichrist that are at the heart of the unified government. Each country believes that doing so is the only way for its survival, so it helps the unified government with every means available. The one same purpose, which is survival through ruling over the world in union, compels each nation to support the unified government with all its wealth, power, and might. Because the nations will have fully supported the unified government, they receive great authority and freely wield their influence during the seven-year Great Tribulation. But their authority and power are short-lived. Their power fades when the seven-year Great Tribulation ends. Revelation 17.14 says, These will wage war against the Lamb, and the Lamb will overcome them, because He is the Lord of lords and King of kings. And those who are with them are the called and chosen and faithful. The goal of the forces of the Antichrist with the beast at the center is to oppose God and the Lord. They are used as instruments by Lucifer and the evil spirits to oppose God and the Lord. It does not mean that they can wage war directly against the Lord. So, they persecute people who believe in the Lord and attempt to wage war against the Lord who is the Lamb. But they can never prevail over the Lord. When the time allowed for the evil spirits comes to a close, the forces of the Antichrist collapse and the evil spirits, including Lucifer, are confined into the abyss. But the forces of the Antichrist Christ will continue persecuting believers all the way to the very end. As a result of this persecution, a great number of people among the believers in the Lord end up denying the Lord. But there are some believers who endure persecution to the end and overcome it. Revelation 17.14 declares that those who are with Him are the called and chosen and faithful. People who are with the Lord will overcome. Now, who are the people siding with the Lord? First, they are the cold. They have been chosen and have entered into the Lord in obedience to His calling. But no matter how many times the Lord calls, unless the person obeys and enters, it amounts to nothing. Among those who fall into the seven-year great tribulation but repent and turn away later are people who will have obeyed the Lord's calling to the end. They overcome persecution and torment at all costs and find victory in reaching salvation. While the Holy Spirit will have been taken away, God gives them grace, His grace to the end. Second, they are the chosen. According to God's will, they have been specifically chosen to be used in His uh, instruments. For example, the 144,000 bond servants belong to the chosen. Because God saw the depths of their heart, chose, and called them, they walked the way of martyrdom and reached salvation and glory. They achieved salvation through martyrdom and will be qualified to reach the place of eternal glory. They are on a different level than those who are called and died martyr's death. Third, they are the faithful. 
They are those who are neither sly, nor forced, nor evil, nor unrighteous. They did not believe in the Lord as they did not know the Lord or know the truth. But since learning the truth, they became completely different people. Because their hearts were truthful, from the moment they came to know the truth, they protected it even at the risk of losing their lives. The two witnesses are an example. Of course, the two witnesses knew and believed in the Lord but remained on the earth for the special task of God. Since their hearts are faithful, they fulfill their God-given tasks to the end. This despite any kind of difficulties and persecution. Their burden to fulfill the tasks is so great that its its scope is simply unfathomable for ordinary people. At their heart for the Lord, as their heart for the Lord remains truthful, however, they carry out their task to the end and reach glorious positions in heaven. They will be subject to inexplicable persecution. We'll continue delving into the following passage reading verses in the next lecture. Let me conclude the message. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the Revelation series is now reaching the end of the seven-year Great Tribulation. What do you feel when you hear the messages about the end time at each session? You must think and say to yourself, I will be more alert, I will be more faithful, I will enter the level of Spirit and Holy Spirit more quickly. You must never go easy on yourself because the seemingly redundant flow of things. Even when the messages of similar contents are repeated, you must use each message to solidify your heart even more. If you find something to repent of, do it without delay. How much is Father God refining you? He refines you over and over again, and in the end, He makes you wheat, chaff, is of no use. If you have something to resolve and throw away, do it now. According to each person's level of faith, some of you will do it because of uh, because you are afraid of the seventy great tribulation and so that you will not remain on the earth. But you must set a goal much higher and greater than that. How closely have the messages on the 70th wedding banquet, the Millennium Kingdom, and the Eternal Kingdom of Heaven reached your heart? That day is fast approaching. On the day our Lord comes to take us back, are you going to receive Him with joy and ecstasy? I will do my utmost in leading you until that day. I ask all of you not to fall behind but follow me to the end. If I could, I would very much like to take each of you to heaven, even with a breathe on your neck and bit in your mouth so that none of you will fall behind. May this desire of mine be fulfilled and all of you stand before our Bridegroom Jesus Christ in the name of our Lord I bless. Let's pray thinking over the message. Hallelujah, 세상까지 함께 갈수 있는 목자의 말씀으로 다 이루어질 수 있도록 능력 주시고 충만함으로 함께 주옵소서 주여 감사합니다. 우리 주 예수 그리스도 이름으로 In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ I pray. Amen. Let us receive the prayer for the sake of the senior pastor through video. Please lay your hands on your sick heart or lay your hands on your chest for the desire of your heart and receive the prayer with faith.
Hallelujah, Almighty God, our loving Father. Please lay your hands on all believers who are receiving this prayer now. Show your works then transcend time and space on those who are receiving this prayer through GCN and the Internet, in branch churches and local sanctuaries, and all other children of God around the world. Give them the faith to believe from heart, drive away negative thoughts and doubts, and drive away all tests and trials. From head to toe, all entails, joints, nerves, tissues, and cells, whatever the sick part may be, burn them with the fire of the Holy Spirit and the original light. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, germs, and viruses, and infirmities, go away. Light come. Please scorch all their terminal and incurable diseases with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Drive away all endemic diseases, including malaria. All contagious diseases, including cold, flu, and fever, go away. Protect them from all kinds of germs and viruses. Heal them of uh, all stomach, lung, liver, breast, urine, and intestinal cancers, eyes, leukemia, cerebral perplexy, high and low blood pressure, diabetes, heart, thyroid problem, and heart, lung, and women's diseases, and all inflammations go away. Heal them of polio stroke, arthritis, and herniated discs, back pain, headache, neuralgia, and all other pains disappear. Epilepsy, autism, depression, neurosis, and other mental diseases go away. All kinds of paralysis be loosened. Get up, walk, and leave. Let the eyes see you well. Let the ears hear well. Let the blind come to see, the deaf to hear, and the mute to speak. Heal them of after effects of all kinds of accidents. Fix their broken bones. Restore them from burns. Let the heat and burning sensation go away. Father, let there be no scar left. Be cleansed from all kinds of drug addictions, poisoning, and substance abuse. Let the dead nerve tissues and cells be regenerated, bring the dead back to life. Give them the blessings of conception. Receive the blessing of conception. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, the ruler of the power there, the evil forces of heavenly places, and their servants go away. Go away, evil, unclean, force, and deceitful spirits, separating spirits, and all forces of darkness. Losing the bonds of wickedness, darkness, go away. Light come. Father God, give them strength to cry out in prayer and the power to cast off sins and become sanctified. As their souls prosper, let all things go well with them and let their families be evangelized. Protect them from all kinds of accidents and disasters throughout this week and bless them to lead a prosperous life without any problems. With the fiery words of the Holy Spirit, heavenly hosts and angels, and with your blazing eyes, protect all your children, their families, workplaces, and business fields. Give students wisdom and understanding and give them enthusiasm and fervor to study hard. Please keep their hearts and minds from worldly things and let them l o v e of God more fervently. Whether your children eat or drink or in whatever they do, let them do it all to live a life glorifying you, Father God. Let them be able to testify about the living God saying, I've met and experienced God and received His answers and blessings. Father God, thank you. Be glorified alone. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Let's sing Mamin Praise number 159 and give our offerings.
드리시는 헌금을 위해서 기도하겠습니다. 아버지 하나님 Father God, we give tithes, thanksgiving, charity support, as well as for missionary works offerings. Please, also, we give central construction, just in broadcasting, but in special offerings. Please accept them and lay your hands on them so that a good measure may be poured into our lap. Please fulfill our heart's desires and answer our prayers and petitions. Protect our homes, work, and businesses. Bless us so that our ties increase and the reasons for thanksgiving may overflow. Bless us 30, 60, or 100 times according to what we've done and sown. Lord, thank you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer to end the service. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as you also have forgiven our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.